Okay guys, part three of the video on the Chevy design. Uh, this video, I cover the upper four-link arms. I draw them in. Um, got the four-link tabs on the cross member all done. And then I draw the axle tabs on the diff for the upper arms. A lock of that. And then I've got cycling suspension. So that's what this episode's about. Um, like I said before, I'm just getting these videos done, putting them online, and making room for new videos. So, um, yeah, subscribe, like, comment, hit me up on socials, Disguise Customs. Instagram and Facebook uh, is what I roll. Um, and I'll see you guys soon. All right, I've had some food. I even did some welding for one of my buddies on his little race bike. So that's all done dusted. And now I'm back up here with a little bit of a foggy brain, but I'm pushing through it. Done a little bit of drawing off camera. Um, I had to make some changes to the rail width because I didn't take into consideration the rail thickness and change. So that was a whoopsie daisy, but I found it, so that's fine. Um, I changed the dimensions from the outside, outside the rails to the inside, inside the rails. Um, and then that matches up to the stock rails perfectly. I then widened the cross member to take up that slack because obviously it's different. Both arms are, both lower arms are all drawn in and assembled. If we go to the cross member, as you can see here, I've got the tabs all drawn in. Um, the lower tabs that's going to have, uh, I'm going to weld in a little gusset thing there, um, but probably do that afterwards because you've got nice easy access to weld down there. That'll be supplied with a kit. This one I'll probably fabricate myself and make nice because I still got to fabricate the arms in this kit anyway. Uh, upper upper tabs are all drawn in and assembled. Uh, as you can see there, they go all the way through the cross member on that, so it makes nice and easy um, locations for fabricating at home. So that's that done. Now I've got to do some drawing of the upper arms. Um, so it's going to be as simple as starting a new part and oh excuse me it's 1 30 in the morning so my brain's telling me that it doesn't like me as much as it did earlier but he's going to have to just live with that 692.5 is the upper arm length and then just draw a couple of circles like this is just exactly the same as the um, lower control arms. And then add some dimensions for the bush housings. Get rid of that. Do some extruding to one and two from the mid plane, obviously. Like so. Bring the sketch back do another sketch on the origin here so if you always start with that origin whatever plane you decide is always going to start there so it makes it nice and easy if you're doing like sweeps and just circles like this <laughs> um, I'm going to smart to mention that uh, like so um, do a little offset 3.05 because I'm doing things properly because I'm on the camera. Exit the sketch. Extrude. Uh, extrude base. Let's try that one. That one works. Click that. Click that. Look at that. Beautiful arms. Now I'm just going to do some holes. So we're going to do another sketch on the right hand plane so I can draw them both at the same time. Circle, so, so, yeah, so, so, smart dimension. If you do smart dimensions, you can work off diameter. If you enter the, the um, circle dimensions, like in the circle man, it's radiuses. So, you gotta kind of remember, because it's stuffed me up a couple of times. Like, oh, wait, what, how? But no, and I was like, oh. Drop penny action, e All right, beautiful. One falling arm. If only it was that simple to make these. Huh? I think at this stage I'm not even talking to the camera. I'm just flat out talking to myself.
which is fun. It's not something I don't not not do. Um, this is the latest part. Got the arm correct done. Saved. Minimize. Now I have got to find where those upper arms are in my library list of stuff that I've drawn. I I actually do know where they are. Um, machine parts, small rod end, machine part assembly. No, I thought it was there for sure. I was wrong. Um, assemble. That's fine. I'm close. I can sense it. If there's a generic folder in here, then it's in here. It's in 2022. Generics. I think I found it, everyone. Stop looking, everyone. Stop looking. Uh, part. Looking for assembly. Assemble. Oh, maybe. I think maybe. Let's open it. Hey, I found it. Look at me go remembering where things are. Just. <laughs> so now we've got both those files open. I can start an assembly. Do a little bit of upper arm. And then insert a bush. Like so, do a times two, hit a mate for inside circle into outside circle, OD to ID action, hit a little bit of a uh, stay there deal on it, and a little bit of a deal there, and click and clack, fully defined, crack my back. Save that in not that file, otherwise I'll never find it again. And go to assemblies. Upper arm. Savey, savey. Minimize. Go to rear clip. I'm going to. Ooh, yes. I'm going to do this. Upper arm, same thing, hit an assembly in the circle, hit the assemble inside the circle, hit the face, touch the face gently, whatever you want to, whatever mood you're in, I'm in a, obviously hitting mood, no I'm not, <laughs> I'm in a, I'm always a lovely person, I seem to have done something weird again. What am, why am I doing weird things? Because that's 42, that's 40 mil. And... Because <laughs> I'm math good. I do math good. Um, that's totally wrong. There... Measure. Yeah, no shit. I really thought they were bigger than that. My bad. My bad. That's fine. We can fix that. It's super easy too, by the way. So because we drew it before, we know the boss extruding. So we can go to edit that feature. And it says here 30.5, we can just change it by going 30.5. And instantly, we've got a little something like that. Now pay no attention to all this little weird stuff because these are actually connected through a rod end. So I'm just drawing this for a simple version. Um, and we'll just hit save on that and click that and like that. No one's easy peasy, doesn't change any mates or nothing. So that's good. Simple fix, not the end of the world. Um, 
so let's just go to an upper arm again, control V, C, D, E, F, G, hit a click, clack, front and back, a little bit of an inside, sure, where the hell did you go? And do a little something like that, and do a little something like that, and there you go, we got upper arm, upper arm, lower arm, lower arm, a la 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 da. So now, now, I'm gonna save it. And yes, I do want to rebuild it after it. I don't need that anymore. I don't need that anymore. I'm gonna keep that. Now assembling, assembling these upper chassis tabs always suck. They, I don't know, they just they plague me so bad. So I've got two choices. I can draw them like a different way, or I could draw them the old way and just let them beat my ass on camera so everyone can see how, not how stupid I am, but how challenged I can be at times. I'm going to try, going to try a new way. Am I? Yes, I'm going to try a new way. I'm totally going to do it. So let's just go back to my master file, I'm going to call it. Uh, let's just get rid of, well, let's hide him. And that's going to do a little bit of isolation of these two items. So I know what's going on. I'm going to hit side on the sketch. And if I go to measure from the center of that to the center of that, that is going to give me the measurement that I want that I can assemble off. Because it's the same height off the diff, yeah? So that inside inside is Y axis, which is 135. Down in this corner shows you your planes, your axis planes. So that's where I got that Y measurement from and I just copied and pasted. I just copied that to the clipboard. So now let's go to here. Let's do the exact same thing. Let's do a little bit of isolation. See if this works. Isolate like so. Go to exact the same angle. I can still move everything up and down. Let's do a mate to mate, and then do a distance from center to center, and do my copy and paste, and then hit yes, and that's beautiful. So now, they can't move because it's fully defined at the right angle. So we can go ahead and exit the isolation. Did exactly the same for this one, just so we're both happy doing the thing. Um, especially while it's on the clipboard too. Go to that, go to that, hit the mate. I've set up hotkeys on my mouse too for the common common commands that I use, um, which is obviously my measure, so got mate to there, and I go measure to that side, I can, goes to isometric, at the click of a button, oops, um, and I obviously has it set up all the proper planes on this yet. But anyway, so that's all fully defined, that's what we're at, so yes. So really I just use mate and measure the most. Um, spacebar key just hits me back to where I need it. And this is a good, this is a good angle for suspension geometry too, because let's just do a sketch here, let's just quickly save that, yes. So if we do a sketch, 
on this plane. Sketch uh, front view. If we draw a line from this to center of that and go through the center of that and then giving my polar truck in you'll see the instant center is going to land about the front bumper so yes so that's how figure it out. I've drawn it all in 2D first, which is a lot easier to do, um, but I'm working on another rear clip at the moment for Mac Preston, and um, I've actually drawn a completely different again to this, so I'm always trying new things, I'm always trying to learn um, just better ways of doing it, um, but yeah, so this is how this is set up, that's why I copied that geometry, because it works very well. So we just delete all them for the moment because they're just going to get in my way and hurt my soul. So yeah, that's pretty good. Now I'm going to start drawing some stuff. I'm going to do that to that and isolate those two. I am going to exit isolate because I actually want the bush as well. So let's go. Yeah, pull up her arm and diff tube. Isolate. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to start a sketch on this side. Um, and every time. No. I want to do normal two from that. That's better. So there's a normal two. Um, up here, which will work it off the sketch. So now I can just do a little bit of a circle like so, offset it a bit, a bit in the hair. Then I know the axle tube is 70, uh, 76.2, is that what I said? Yes. So let's just cruise down there. That's how big I'm going to make it. Uh, let's do smart dimension it to where I need it to be. So hit center, which is like that. Circle. Not a circle. Um, half of that is 38.1. again 38.1 now I'm going to add some extra to it I think I'm going to do 21 let's just do some fixing so lines don't move on me that's what I want to do 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 Probably could have just offset that line, it would have been a lot easier, but that's what I got now. Do that. Hit that for polar tracking. Hit this for polar tracking. I think it's called polar tracking on this. Um, I know that's what it was called on um, what's that other program we used, AutoCAD. Um, so, if it is, cool. No, I'm going to leave that as construction. And let's just make these lines one because there's too many of them and when I go to do a something something it's going to tell me no. I don't like no. So, that's kind of where we're at now. I don't... I hate that. So, you, you, I don't know if you can kind of see what I'm trying to do here. I want these falling columns because normally these falling tabs, sorry, normally just cut them once and you flip them and they kind of go one that way and the other way. 
These ones, I actually want to have them so they're straight on down when you look at it on the side plane because it makes it a lot easier if, if you want to like strap the backs of them uh, for extra strength which is very recommended because these take a lot of side load so if you tie them together they're very very strong so that is what I'm trying to accomplish with this which shouldn't be too difficult no 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 yes maybe kind of Let's just go that sketch open and let's just give that a little bit of a this and make that go away and do a whole selection and control exit and go away and then let's start a new part, yeah? Yeah, good idea. Also, talking to myself, not the camera. But if you reply, happy bonus. Um, I'm not even going to bother, just going to extrude it, just going to raw dog it, yo. Straight out there, I'm going to do it out of 5mm, and I'm going to save that as a part, and it's going to be called Axle Tab. Yes. Now I'm going to go back into this file. Into some, into some voodoo magic, I think. Um, it's not that one I want. It's this one I want. Locky. Insert a component, please. Axel tab, thank you. Look at that, it's a 3D object now. Like magic. Like magic. Do a quick little assemble, go to that circle, like so. Go to the circle, go to that circle. Quick clack front and back. I don't know why I say that right now. Anyway, whatever. Now here is a little bit of like a something something I think I'm gonna do. Let's just open that. And then let's do... Okay, that's a weird sketch, but whatever. Um, sketch, like so. Like so. Get a bit of this. Do all that. Exit, stage, left, yes, okay, sure, beautiful. Let's go in here, open up my features, go down to my boss extrude, show, and then you can see I've still got the um, construction line there. So if I go to that and hit to that, it's not going to let me do that because there's a weird measurement somewhere. It's not going to let me do it, eh? That's annoying. Maybe let's do a measurement from that and see where we're wrong. Um, 135, 615. 135, yeah, okay, cool. So we are off. That's fine. We are. So that line is actually too short to intersect by like, not much, but it's enough to go, no, I, no, I don't want to do that. So do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to open this again, I'm going to go into that sketch, I'm going to smart dimension it. I'm going to smart dimension this one for first, because there's no other smart dimensions in it, so if there's no other ones if you go to change it then it's just going to go change it, the whole scale of it, which totally sucks. So that is like so now, so we can just minimise that. And with any luck, I should be able to make that to that line. It's been a turd. It's been I'm not a nice person. So let's get rid of... Distance, distance. Let's get rid of this distance. Yes. It's only going to be minuscule, so I'm not terribly worried. Look at that. That's wonderful. It's exactly what I wanted to do. It's exactly what I wanted to do.
Anyway, yeah, here's a little bit of voodoo magic for you. Um, let's save that. Thank you. Now, if I click this and go to edit part, now I can edit that part with all this stuff around me. So I've got references to draw through and trace and all sorts of stuff. But the command I'm going to use is called cavity. And it's as simple as that. One click button gone, I am going to make the yellow one only. Okay, obviously I'm tired again. Again, cavity, hit the axle tube, say okay, select the bodies, I want to keep the blue one, not the yellow one. Wrong way, Mr. Ma Mr. Wayne, wrong way. So that is a little bit of voodoo magic. Now I can go open the part and you'll see it's on an angle. Now you've got to always do everything like on flat surfaces because a laser cutter isn't going to cut that chamfer in it. Although it would be lovely, it's just, that's just not the way the cookie crumbles. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a sketch. Hit the side, and so we'll do convert entities, convert entities. Did that work? Yeah, I did. Okay, cool. So we got that and that and that. So now we're just going to trim the opposite lines that aren't showing. So this one goes around and goes to that, so we want to get rid of that one. And this one goes around, comes to that one. And there we go. Now we've got a proper radius to work with. And then all I do is do the same thing as I do with my other copy and paste. So I control X, go that way, do that, um, and delete the cavity because the cavity is actually mate, like it's actually um, mate related. So if you change the mate, then it changes the cavity and that's just not cricket. Hit that like that, because it was work off center, delete that, complete the thing. I'll just do a quick little measure because I think that's right. If I go 1846, 16.2, let's just center, let's just control X that, control V it, hit that, move that on the actual center of this line in between circles because I think I mucked up a bit. Okay, exit, extrude, cut through all the way through. Thank you so much. Now it's a laser cut form, 2D banger. If we go through, look like that. See, I was correct in it being the way it was. But that's fine. I'm okay with that because I'm going to delete this mate that I got here. Now it pivots again. Now I want to go to that point, and then that's going to equal that point as well. So there we go, that is exactly how it's going to sit on the axle tube, which can be quite tricky to draw in a normal 2D function. So I am actually quite happy with that. And I know I was going to said I was going to draw it the other way, but I decided I'm going to draw it this way. So we go to that, hit there. 
Where are you? Come back to you. Get over here. Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter? I can't remember. I should know. My friends have tournaments all the time and I'm always missing out because I'm too busy. Or my anxiety tells me that you shouldn't leave the house. Click. Thank you. Obviously it's assembled well. And there we go, cool. Upper and lower axle tabs, that is absolutely fantastic. I like that. And exit that. Open that so I get rid of all my crazy sketches on it. So the design tree on the side here is awesome. Like you can just find files, whatever you need. Um, upper arm, all that type of stuff. So I just select that, that tells me where it is. Go to my features. Um, it's going to be on whichever sketch is still showing. That one. And gone. Gone, gone, gone. Gone, gone, gone. And that is there. A very, very, very good assembled falling tab. And it's just a simple, now I've got that file, and I'll just save all that, because that could cause me some grief. If that crashes, I'm a good point. A good point. Now it's just Control-C, Control-V. Let's do some isolation, so it's not as busy. Excuse me, wow, that came out of nowhere. What the heck, man? Isolate. You forgot to add the bush, you silly person. Uh, upper arm, axle tube, diff tab, isolate, booyaka shaka, jungle is massive, booyaka shaka. Oh, is that right? I mean, I haven't watched Ali G in ages. Hilarious show. Really, really, really dig it. Um, control C, control V. Let's try again. Click that. Gonna highlight the whole thing. Man, um, do that, correct, also do that, also do that, do that I mean, do that, and now this isn't going to assemble right because there's still that construction line in there, so I'm just going to go and find that, uh, wherever it is, I might need to turn that sketch back on. I am going to turn that sketch back on. Features, boss extrude, stretch, turn on. Now we'll go find that mate. It's a distance command. No, it's not a distance command. Is it a distance command? Let's, let's uh, suppress it and see if it does it. Yes, it was that one. So let's go back and just delete it all together. Because I just did. And now we just hit corners. Corner one. Corner, corner two. On the other side. Boom, look at that. Zachary. Same, same, same here, man. Collected, collected. It is so nice. Do a little hidey hidey on that sketch. Exit the isolate. Save the file. I like it. I'm gonna open that file, hit the cut extrude. Edit. Um, should have just done normal too, but whatever. I'm just going to add a nice little radius in this, like so. Feel it. It's going to be uh, 21, maybe. For some reason that's been a turd. I think, the, I think the radius is too big. I think I think I'm right. I was right. <laughs> and that's the money right there, big boy. 
as in Iron Resurrection. That's the Huckleberry right there. It's hilarious too. Click that, click that, to click that, to fill up that, to go that, to do that, to do this, to make that go away, to delete that, to do that, to do that, exit, and radius, like a boss. And look at that, just like a ball one, all four modified. So a bit of drawing off camera just to figure out how to, the best way to do these falling arms. Um, falling arms, like the triangulation is designed to keep the diff straight, so through triangulation. Um, but therefore, once the diff starts cycling up, then these arms twist. Now SolidWorks only recognises this as, um, as a solid. So it can't do anything, anything else unless you tell it to. So what I've gone, gone ahead and did, did is drew some little lines inside the arms. Um, so a vertical line and a circle for a center point all in the mid uh, on both sides, like so. And then assemble it to the center so I can twist around like crazy. And then that vertical line helps the bushes stay in line. Uh, without driving me crazy on OCD. Um, axle tabs are now a assembly with a center line and everything in there. They can do exactly the same. And then obviously I've set the distance properly on the diff so it's fully locked down. So that's the short version. I'm going to go ahead and do it right now in front of you. So you can be like, oh, that's what he means. Instead of trying to imagine what's in my brain of rain things, uh, axle upper, da -dum, da -da -da -da, like so, so you can see here, center line, circle, for the mid, so we just hit a mid, not the face, mid, to that midpoint on the diff, like so, now it's going to want to do all that type of stuff, so I'm going to hit that horizontal line with the back of the chassis, so I can do all that. And now I can twist around and all sorts of stuff, but it still stays parallel. Um, next thing I need to do is tell it um, to be flexible. So flexible, like if you do a sub-assembly, like it brings it in as a locked unit and you've got to tell it to be flexible, otherwise you come up with a thousand error messages just like I did. Now we can just hit some corners to axle tubes, like so. Let's do two insides, like so. Now we're going to do another one here, because it's doing that. So inside, just assembling it just like I would in real life. And then that is axle tabs all locked in. So now I'm going to go ahead and bring an arm in, an upper arm. I'm just going to just copy and paste them in because, you know, that's how I roll. I'm going to hit that center point to this center point. And you can see what that allows me to do. So now it's going to have that simulated bush flex that you really want. And of course, I'm going to use this line here to go across that plane so then it straightens up the bush like so and now all I've got to do is just hit that center to that center like so and that is a locked locked in as you can see down here fully defined I've still got the um, oh, it told, told me a whole heap of weird errors hopefully it doesn't stop me from doing what I'm doing we go to half travel and suppress it. And it's just made a total liar out of me. Uh, let's just delete that last one because I'm feeling it busted me. Flexible, yes. Everything locked down. Mate, click, center. Not letting me. 
fine. I'll do line to center. Um, there we go. I did it. So there we have fully cycling suspension with your pinion roll and everything too. Because it's working exactly as your suspension should. Like it's got all the points, like the axle tabs are welded to the diff, the falling tabs are welded to the diff, falling cross members fully welded together, the arms are pivoting with an angle. Let's just see if we just bump this up, just something like that, and just have a look. Come on, man, you can do this. Oh my goodness. Sorry if you're getting seasick from this. So they're still there. They're still there. But oh. anyway, that's the way you have to do it for to tell SolidWorks to pivot your suspension. Well, that's the way I've figured it out anyway. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of guys with a lot of SolidWorks experience that have had classes and everything, so it could tell me a much better way to do it. But that's the way I'm doing it at the moment, and it works for me. So I'm going to save that now. And then I can go ahead and hide all the sketches. Hide, hide. And let's just go to this one and go straight down to the source. Hide that one. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna have to hide that one and hide all of them. Like you're only gonna kind of do this once, because uh, because they're all exactly the same things. They just seem to follow. Hide, hide, hide. Go in here, hide, and then it's all cleaned up. Oh, except for this little, oh, except for lower arm ones, which I'm fine with. Savey, savey. So there you go, cycling suspension. It's always a good moment when this does because it's getting close to the end. Um, now I can put it up at full bump and then I'm playing with bag brackets and shock mounts. And then I can just add a bit of extra bit of tube at the back and probably another, uh, probably be actually is going to be it. Pretty simple cross, it's a pretty simple clip.